Welcome back to Switched to Linux. Well, today I want to have a look at a Linux distribution that I have not looked at before. This isn't necessarily designed as a daily driver, but more of a management or a special focused. So we're going to look at 4M Linux. And apologies, I'm still working out some of the lighting in here and the new setup. And uh, we'll get uh, another light down here. I'm just deciding where I want that other light yet, but... We'll figure it out. But anyway, as we move on in, what we're going to do is have a look at what uh, 4M Linux is about and talk just a little bit about how the distribution is put together. So over at their website at 4MLinux.com, we have precious little information. Now, it is a independent Linux distribution. In other words, it's not based on anything else. They, the 4M comes from a general purpose Linux distribution with a strong focus on the 4Ms of computing. Now, I have a lot of 3M tape here in the van to keep things together. Um, but as far as 4M, hey, we're just adding more M's. So their 4M's are maintenance. So this is a system rescue live CD. And this is a good thing to always have around, whether that's uh, maybe Tails, um, 4M would be good, Anopix would be good, anything which has a ton of system utilities that's really designed to run on uh, any type of system on a USB key would be good. And this one is certainly one of those distributions. The second is multimedia. So full support for a huge number of image, audio, and video formats. So if you need something, for some reason, your distributions or your daily drivers or things aren't working with certain formats, then the multimedia function, you can plug this guy in and hopefully out of the box, run a lot of different things on it. Uh, a mini server, so of just a variety of web servers information. And this runs the, uh, uh, what is it called? The uh, uh, I, I, INET dev, I don't know. Well, we'll look at that again. I forget exactly off the top of my head what it's called again. Uh, it's the initialization system for a variety of network platforms. Uh, is what it is. And the last one is mystery. Um, I'm not sure where they get the mystery word, but it's a collection of classic Linux games. So even just the little tiny build here, which is based on JWM, that's Joe Window Manager. Uh, same offerings are given in Puppy and in Sparky Linux. Super lightweight, requires almost nothing to run. And uh, it basically, even as little as it is, it's still almost a gigabyte to download. It's like 998 megabytes to download. And um, you can actually have a, have a look over their website. You see, they don't have a ton of extra information here, but um, they, do have, um, they do have over on their releases over here, uh, which the, this one was just released July 31st. So this is 4M37.0 stable. And uh, what they have installed, they'll, they'll have a series of these things installed, but then a lot of these, there's install links. And so it's a little bit, it's kind of designed to have a lot of stuff in it, but at the same time, it is, it also doesn't have everything installed. It has everything available to install very quickly. Like, for example, Wine. Uh, Wine is there in the menu, but it's not actually installed. If you click on that menu item, it will offer you to install Wine. And so here we are installed. Just in, um, the installation is a little bit different in that uh, you select the install from the 4M option here. It's going to create some install scripts. It's not a standard installer. It's going to just prompt you where to put it. It's going to set an install script. And then the next time you boot the system on the hard drive, it's going to copy all the files in and then have itself installed. So this is your default desktop here. So it, uh, it will set the default language as U.S. English. It does not set a specific location. So you need to go into the terminal and select your TZ select in order to walk through the systems to get your, um, uh, to get your uh, time zones correct. Now, your, as far as you can see, it's not maximizing on the screen, and uh, that happens to be the, um, it just doesn't have the detection to do the full-size screen here. Best I could do is just amplify it, so let's go ahead and increase the size now. 
So what we have over here is we have Conky on and off. This is, of course, you can just toggle this guy on and off. It's going to show you all the information. You can see it's running on 362 megabytes. We have a webcam stream. I'm not sure which application this is using, and there's not a webcam plugged into this, so it's not going to let me do that. We have a screen recorder and a screen shooter. So these are actually really nice um, they seem to all be good terminal tools, so it gives you more things to think about if you don't want something good, shiny, and whatever else. Um, our video player is going to be uh, Celluloid, I think it is. Um, yeah, it's Celluloid, and then audio player is Audacious. So you have all super lightweight audios. Our mail client here is SciFeed, so everything in here is just kind of becoming... Um, uh, just really the, the lightest weight stuff that we can get, uh, web browser was ice cap or pale moon, pale moon. That's right. Uh, so we got pale moon there and then we have a calendar, calculator, simple text editor and a terminal. And then there's iDesk, which I've never seen this and I actually forgot to research it prior, but if you click this guy off, you can see that we go back to a solid desktop. You can right click do whatever. Uh, if you turn this guy back on, it's going to give you this mode where we can just um, left click on the desktop and then pull up our whole menu. And this is pretty much what we see here. There's a lot here that um, a lot of what's on the menu is not even installed. Uh, some of it is. So obviously some things are here. So there's a tour node on and off. Uh, I'm able to turn this on. I'm not sure if it's configured to work with anything or not. Um, Abbey Word is here, and then if you head on over extensions in LibreOffice, anything under the extensions will give you the option to download it if you would like to. So there are a lot of applications that it comes built with out of the box. And there's also a lot of things that need to be installed. So here's Net Applications, here's Firefox, SeaMonkey, Thunderbird, Chromium, Vivaldi, uh, Pale Moon, Dropbox, FileZilla, anything here that you click is going to run a script to install it. So it's nice to see that those are options that you can install something should you want to. They do have some games already uh, preset. There's a, I played around with a Tetris. Uh, I played around with a Pac-Man a little bit. And then here's just a few other ones here. So you see there's a lot of just kind of little nice games there huh? old cool doom this is, oh, no, even that wants to download the file so you can say yes or no on those some of the games are there some of them are not all right so um, looking at what we have here um, I wanted to evaluate their original claim looking at what their 4ms are First and foremost, could you boot this guy up and do some form of maintenance or system rescue based on the information that we have here? Um, inside of here, we do have uh, file utilities. We do have partitioning tools. We do have F disks. We have Gparted. I would absolutely say that this is something to keep around on a live key to help with your systems if you need to boot up a, a platform and uh, just get something going. I would say that definitely is certainly an option. Multimedia, we do have um, we do have ISO Master, FI Burn. We have a variety of different applications for playing uh, different media files. So I would say that yes, they they do have uh, they do have enough multimedia, including um, PAVU Control. They have AU Mix, Salsa Mixer. So there's just a lot of different uh, tools on here. Image Magic. Um, Sound Studio, a lot of these different things. I haven't even really spent a whole ton of time looking at them, just basically familiar with what they are. But yes, out of the box, it does meet the multimedia. Mini server. So here you can start all, you can stop all. Uh, these are going to be FTP, HTTP servers, SSH, Telnet. So you can do the tests and see. Uh, so you can see that that's not started. Go ahead and do that. Choose a test which you want to run, a public, a private. Uh, PHP info, let's just go with PHP info. PHP seems not to be installed or it's just not running. Let's go back over here, click our start all. It says it's starting all servers. All servers have now been started. 
And let's go ahead and do an HTTP test. And it does appear as though it's, <laughs> it's not installed. So maybe it doesn't have all the server stuff it was thinking. Uh, let's do a public HTML. Okay, so yeah, apparently apparently the HTTP server works. And it's just that uh, PHP appears to not be installed. And so let's see what we have here. So here's FTP. So this is actually working. So FTP server is working. So everything except your PHP does appear to be working inside of here. So I'll give that a sure, maybe, although they didn't promise us PHP necessarily. But really, what's the purpose of a server these days without it? I don't know. And then under mystery, I did find that the gaming on this was blah at best. A lot of the stuff that's here, it's snowing. Great. Okay. Thank you. How do I stop it from snowing? Oh, well. I guess it's snowing on the screen until further notice. <laughs> okay. Um, uh, the games on this are, I can say they're fairly, fairly lame. Uh, being a Tetris master on the old Nintendo, I was barely able to get to do anything on Tetris. It's just too hard to move and manipulate the pieces. Pac-Man was, was much the same. Um, some of the things on here, as we already looked at, were not necessarily installed. So here's Wine. Let's see if this is running. So a lot of the stuff here is not even installed yet. So I'd have to come in here and... Uh, I'd have to come in here and install a lot of extra things. So out of the box, you're not going to use this on a live key and then, you know, spin up a lot of games. The games that are there are fairly lame. And uh, so I'm not really all that keen on it for that portion as well. But I'm not sure you'd be looking for something like this to do gaming anyway. I'm sure if you're actually doing gaming on Linux, you're you're running something like Arch or Pop! OS that specifically runs a lot of gaming information as it is. And so there is really my, my quick look at uh, 4M Linux. Overall, I think that uh, it, it's definitely a good pass for uh, a decent distribution to throw on a live key where it can actually help with fixing things. It does have some server uh, build items and uh, can do some multimedia. Although in the modern trend, I'm not sure you're going to find a Linux distribution that multimedia is challenging to run with anyway. So I'm not sure if that's necessarily a valid point or not at this point in time. Um, all that being said, however, I find that 4M Linux is worth it. It does accomplish the goal it sets out to do. It's not super lightweight, but it is actually uh, an interesting and compelling distribution. Is it going to be on my top running list? Eh, probably not, but it certainly is uh, is a compelling distribution to have a look at for what it is. So let me know your thoughts if you played around with 4M at Linux. Let me know all that in the comments down below. Thank you for watching this video from Switched to Linux. This channel would not be possible without the backing of the program supporters scrolling on the screen now. You can be a supporter at Patreon at patreon.com slash T-O-M-M or at thinklifemedia.com. I also want to thank the open source community who creates such excellent software that makes producing this show possible. Please remember to support your software communities. Thank you, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.